Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you to Sabira Speaks, another edition of our show. And uh, today I'd like to welcome, um, oh, excuse me, hang on. Hang on. Let me go back and do that again. I messed up already. Well, hello, everyone. This is Sensei Sabira Falami. Welcome to to Sabira Speaks. And today I am talking with martial arts and financial stability expert David Sire about how he got started with his martial arts career and what an amazing career it's been. And also he's going to talk to us about uh, becoming financially stable while you are on that journey of kind of moving from being a uh, a student to being an independent um, dojo owner um, and um, basically how he went from, from that being a student to being a school owner. So welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you. So just to give you guys a little bit of background, I just want you to know David Steyer is a well-known expert on the subject of martial arts, specifically American Kempo. Um, he has uh, an extensive background uh, being trained through the Ed Parker lineage. And, um, you know, he's had his uh, history as well with finances. And, you know, he's learned a lot about uh, being an independent martial arts instructor. So he's graciously consented to do this interview and share his extensive knowledge um, and experience so that every independent martial arts instructor can understand how martial arts instructors can actually create passive income streams. So, David, thanks again for joining us on this live interview. So let's just jump right in so you can share with us how you got started uh, and what our audience can learn and apply when it comes to, you know, this field of martial arts and financial stability. That's a really interesting combination, mm-hmm. and so I'm, I'm just really excited to hear, as a martial, art, martial artist myself and your student, <laughs> I'm really, mm-hmm. really interested to uh, hear what you have to say with us on that. So are you ready? Excellent. Absolutely. I'm here. Okay, cool. So my first set of questions, David, is about your background, your experience in the field of martial arts, um, and kind of your personal journey, your story there and also with financial stability so that the okay. other martial arts, the independent martial arts instructors in our audience can understand who you are and where you're coming from and really how you got started. So okay. we'll kind of just jump into your thoughts um, about let us know what you would do if you had to start all over again when it comes to you know, starting your own martial arts school? And that's a great question. Uh, and, again, thank you for having me. Uh, definitely the, it's a pleasure and it's definitely an honor as well. Um, so as far as if I really needed to start over again, uh, one of the biggest, the f- maybe first thing I would really look at uh, is really the second part of your questions as far as the name financial stability goes. Mm. Um, really seeing where I can get more money from. Uh, I mean, I know when I started, I was able to get a lump sum of of money um, from uh, different aspects, uh, but really seeing where else money could flow from to make things easier for me uh, would have been best. Um, Now that I know really where it can come from, it would have been best to know that up front. Wow, that's good. So you would have put other streams of income in place before opening your school. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Um, tell us how you got started with your um, your American Kempo training. How, how, did, how did you get started? So I was 13 years old, um, and even before then, it, 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 it's funny because when I was really young, I was about nine years old, and there was a mall in, in Baltimore actually Owings Mills, called Owings Mills Mall. And there was a kiosk there for what would you, uh, they're not so much around anymore. There's only a few left, which is called Kim's Karate. Um, so my dad said I could sign this waiver or whatever, and it's a possibility you could get two free lessons. 
So I signed it, and I went to my first lesson. I learned how to throw one kick called an axe kick, came home, kicked my sister in the head. My parents said, nope, that's it. But then <laughs> <laughs> after a while, uh, my dad agreed that we'll try again. Uh, so he actually had taken me to a karate studio uh, called American Kempa Karate Studios in Reisterstown, Maryland. They've moved since then down the road about five minutes. Uh, but we walked in there, and I was just watching these black belts, and they were doing what we call techniques on each other, which is basically like a set pattern that you do on an opponent, um, which focuses on, like, power and speed, timing, all these good things. And I had grown up watching such things like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, um, uh, Power Rangers, of course. And I always wanted to do something like this. Um, so after watching these black belts going back and forth, I look at my dad, and I guess I must have been starstruck or whatever. He says, all right, we'll sign up today. <laughs> so basically wow. we signed up that day, and I was just – a sponge back then. I've gotten it back now where I'm still a sponge where it's just I'll soak this knowledge up that my instructor wants to give me. Um, so that's really where it all started. Mm, okay. Okay. And and talk a little bit about, um, <clears throat> you know, your start when you first opened up your independent martial arts school. Um, talk a little bit about some of your experiences on the financial side, just, you know, so that our our independent martial arts instructors can kind of, you know, learn how to apply some of your lessons to their situations in today's world. Sure. So the very first thing that I needed to do uh, was get a website, um, just like any other school has. I needed to get a website, and I only had a lump sum of money, so I knew I couldn't pay extreme amounts for an excellent website, for a website um, guru to make for me. So I actually went and I saw a commercial on TV, and then I saw it over the Internet for Wix.com, W-I-X.com, where you could pay, I believe it was $150, and you could create your own website. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was one of the very first things that I saw. Now, the problem now that really persists, I keep getting different calls from different places that, of course, now they see that we're out there, and they want me to get involved with them. Um, I got a call actually earlier this week uh, from Fox 45, where they said they were from Fox 45, saying that they are doing um, basically stories on different martial arts studios in Baltimore. Uh, But I also got that call last year as well, and basically they want to charge you an extreme amount of money, I believe it was $400 to $450, for them to really put an article on Fox 45, which would be great if I had the money to do it. Um, At Mm -hmm. that point, I would have done it. But now knowing where different streams of income now can come from and that I'm working on, this is something in the future, not now, because we're not exactly where we want to be to make that much of of a jump. Um, but these are different things that I'm able then to get involved in. Uh, so Fox 45 was one thing. Uh, another lesson I had learned, uh, there was something um, that they had said they were like a lead magnet. Uh, a lead magnet is such things like you hear about Premier Martial Arts. That is like a lead magnet where they give you campaigns, things like this. That's one type of lead magnet. The other lead magnet that I had um, Basically, they said, well, if you get involved with us, and it was $100 a month, not only will we keep track of your Google and get you on top of uh, when somebody searches martial arts Baltimore, you'll be the first one on there. Um, They'll give you that. They'll give you something in the yellow pages. Well, now you know nobody has those big yellow books anymore (laughs) Right. (laughs) of people's phone numbers. But I got involved in it because it sounded good to me. Um, and I didn't really think it through. So then what happens is you then have them saying they're showing you on the screen or a piece of paper, well, these many people called you, so these were leads. But when I said to them, nobody ever called me, or the people that actually called me were robot calls, 
They didn't really have anything to back it up with. So one of the first things I had to really learn was to be very, um, like a black belt, be very deliberate in the way that I'm moving, be very stealthy in the way that I'm moving, and be very knowledgeable. Don't jump unless you have to jump. Research first. If it looks good, sometimes it's too good to be true. But Mm -hmm. sometimes it can be good. So do your research. After you've done your research, then make the jump. Don't jump and then learn in hindsight what's really the truth. Got it. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Would you say, David, you were an overnight success or did you – are you are you working for it? Um, I was not an. I'm going to be the first to say this was not an overnight success. Um, I have been very, um, uh, what's the word? Um, very uh, uh, trained. I guess the correct word is uh-huh. um, uh, very. Uh, um, my instructor, one of my mentors, Mr. Francisco Vigor, my instructor, has taken me basically, like I always say, take your student by the hand and teach them. So not only has he taught me the martial art aspect, but he's taught me the business aspect. Um, Even though I've been um, running martial arts schools, I've been helping running martial arts schools, seminars, tournaments, things like this, it's always good to have that mentor, to have somebody to go to, uh, be it him, be it my grandfather, uh, be it my father, have somebody to go to that you know if you have a question, they're there to answer it. So I have been very uh, trained in my thinking. I've been very trained to, as far as patience would go. Don't jump mm-hmm. at something just because it looks good. Do your research. Be patient. After you've researched it, if it looks good and it's okay, then go. Don't just start jumping at things um, is really mm-hmm. what I've learned. So that we really we haven't been an overnight success. It's taken a lot of work, and I'm still working at this. Um, I've come a long way, and I'm very proud of where my studio has gone and where I've gone as well. I mean, at this point, we've both um, been able to grow and expand our boundaries. Now, not only are we in Maryland, we're in Pennsylvania, uh, and Mm -hmm. soon, hopefully, we'll be around New Jersey. I've been teaching seminars around there as well and have friends in New Jersey. So that's where we are. You know, one of the things you just said that I think is really important that we draw attention to you made a distinction. You said, we have both been growing, meaning you, David Steyer, the person, separate from Steyer's martial arts, the, yes. the school, the business. Mm-hmm. I think that is very, very important, and I think a lot of um, entrepreneurs uh, kind of mesh themselves with their business, and they don't understand that their business can only grow and expand their borders, to use your words, Correct. at the pace that the business owner personally develops, meaning mm-hmm. focus on their personal development. So right. I, I think that, was, that is a critical component, uh, a critical distinction that you made. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about um, some roadblocks. Um, sure. I know that you know you've got a particular uh, a particular financial tool that you use that most people don't ever even think about. Mm-hmm. And so I want you to you, you told me a little bit about it, and I, I want you to expand on like tell tell us um, what that is. Because I think if independent martial arts instructors knew about this particular, it's like a real stealthy tool that you got going. Yep. Um, and it's so basic. You know, it's like a front snap kick. It's really basic. <laughs> but how many of us overlook this one particular tool that you use in a very different way? So I'm, I'm not going to steal your thunder. I want you to go ahead and tell us about that. Sure. Um, so it was brought to my attention about six months ago um, as far as currency would go, um, really where the U.S. is going, where the world is going as far as currency, and where us as um, entrepreneurs and 
independent martial arts instructors and studio owners, really where we can go ourselves. Um, for so long, we've been uh, boggled down as far as currency or, or uh, what we call promissory notes. Um, so now, one of the things you actually brought up to me, uh, Sabir actually brought up to me, uh, what's it's called Carrot Bars, uh, Carrot Bars International. Um, so when we bring Carrot Bars International up, it's not just buying gold. It's never just buying gold. You're exchanging your current currency for gold. Uh, so not only are you getting little pieces of gold a gram at a time, uh, but you're also, as an affiliate with them, you're also able to make money. Uh, so if you're finding people that want to do the same thing as I do, I want to be able to, we come back to the word expand. I want to be able to expand the studio. This is one of the huge ways that I can actually expand by making more money. So no longer do I have to worry about chasing, chasing the dollar. I'll let the dollar come to me instead. Mm, um, you don't have to worry about chasing students down. Correct. I don't have to worry about focusing on how many students do I have because that's where I've been. Students come, students go. Um, now, luckily, over this past even week, I've gained two students. And even that by itself is interesting because it's when you try chasing something, when you try, I, I, I bring this up, say, try case, chasing the carrot around. Mm-hmm. You, you say never that a lot. Catch, yeah. You never catch the carrot. But until you let the carrot go, then the carrot comes to you. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing with the students. I'm trying to chase the money or chase the students around, worry about how many students I have versus if I let it go, let either let students come to me or at the same time let gold work for me, basically exchanging money that I already currently have and being able to make it back uh, tenfold um, mm-hmm. very quickly um, by getting uh, uh, people wanting to do the same thing, wanting to become a business in its own. So not only do you have the studio, but you have the gold working as a business. And it's very simple. Basically every week or every other week or every month, exchanging a certain amount of money for one piece of gold to be able to stash the gold away. For a rainy day, you don't touch the gold. But by bringing people with you, everybody makes money in the long run. So that's just so another saying, huge way. You're saying you basically have an, a another a passive income stream that's based mm-hmm. on, first of all, you simply saving every month. Correct. Yep. That is powerful right there. Right. And, and so that's why I said this is a really simple and basic tool that most people don't, you know, we all have a front snap kick. Mm-hmm. We all have, you know, a jab. But, a jab. Mm-hmm. you know, you don't think about, how to use that differently, and, and you always say in class about putting some English on it, right? Yeah. So we're all, we all know, oh, we need to save. You know, we need to pay ourselves first. We know that in, in theory, and in, we know that's a good philosophy to live by. But the mm-hmm. English that you put on it is saving in a different vehicle than these promissory notes called dollars instead of, you know, saving in a debt instrument, you actually are saving in an asset, which is correct gold. That's Something that tangible. is putting some English on it. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that that takes me to another question. So let's say you know I'm a studio owner, and is it possible that I could actually embed this into my business? Meaning, when students, you know, when people decide to become a student of yours. Is this kind of like a benefit package that you can have um, that you can offer your students and say, you know, listen, we're here to do more than just help you learn how to get physically fit and how to, you know, save yourself on the streets. We want to help you save your finances. We want to help you get fiscally fit as well. Is that kind of what you're saying? Absolutely. This is something that I'm saying of where even if if a new student signs up, and I say to them, you can pay me a certain amount a month or I can help you actually save in the long run and help what? you actually make more money. Um, I mean, wow. when we look, I'm looking every month at my bank statement um, that I still have now, and they're charging me $12 a month just for a fee to keep track of my money. 
this is something that that it there's we're getting money taken away from us for something that we don't even spend anything on so mm-hmm. this is just another passive way to be able to get income not only for yourself but for students because everybody wants to save it's interesting when you look at some videos that are out there and they're talking about the past i mean my grandmother was is a historian so i'm very enthralled in history mm-hmm. but when you look at the money in history saying that the people in the 1940s now today have their money, they learn how to save it, things like this. But when you start looking at the baby boomer ages, and then you start looking at my generation, when you look down the road, their debt is going to be so high, and it's going to affect the U.S. Now, this is just a way for us to say, okay, forget about the debt. Let's have another passive stream that not only myself but my students can use to help them in the long run. I'm not worrying about so much the short term. People always worry about where I am today or where they are today. Let's worry about where we are in 10 years, in 20 years. When we retire, am I going to have enough to be able to survive on? So this is just another way for myself and my students to be able to not have to worry about that. So you're saying that you give your students a choice when they sign a contract with you that they can either pay you or they can pay themselves by setting Correct. up a savings, a recurring savings account, and the same, basically the same money they would probably pay you in promissory note. So you're able to do two things at one time. Which, I mean, as I mean, my mind is just blown right now. That that is mm-hmm. so freaking unique. Mm-hmm. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I've been in martial arts for 25 years. I've never had a dojo instructor owner say to me I want you to pay yourself you can choose you can pay yourself first you can pay yourself and in so doing I'm taken care of financially or you can mm-hmm. just give me the cash and then as a business owner you will take that cash and save part of it anyway so either way you win but you actually put in a place for it to be win-win for them and win-win for you correct which is amazing um, and then this gives you a long-term income stream. What I'm thinking is, because we know that typically, I don't know, what would you say as a, as a school owner, people usually, if they're going to drop out, they drop out around how many years or, or what belt range is? Probably about one year, one and a half years, yeah. Okay. So we could stay on that rat wheel of chasing people, knowing that they're going to stay for a year, a year and a half, traditionally, or you could say set them up with a savings account where they're getting gold, and most people, once they have that habit, even if they leave the school, you're still getting a a, a, a monthly recurrent fee. Correct. Wow. (laughs) That's beast, David. That is ninja Mm -hmm. right there. So you're like, whether you're my student in the dojo or not, I'm still positively affecting your life. You're actually helping them create a legacy for their family. You're helping them with their finances in the immediate, and you're helping them with their physical fitness, health, and learning American Kempo and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Wow. I think if I was uh, looking to own... a, open up my own school, I would definitely want to talk to you. That That is so unique. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is Absolutely. so unique. Wow. All right. So, uh, gosh, you answered a lot of questions in here already. Whew. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do I want to know here? Um, tell me this. How is the world of martial arts uh, different now than when you got started? So the world is changing. Um, I mean, we've gone from the Karate Kid days where all the martial arts schools were full of people because of what the first Karate Kid did. Um, mm-hmm. We expected things to change uh, basically when Kung Fu Panda came out. There was a little increase in children. We expected things to change when the new Karate Kid movie came out which is funny because it's not even about karate, it's about kung fu. But either way, we were expecting more people to come from that. Um, And that didn't happen. 
mixed martial arts came around at that point, and we were starting to grow. Uh, and you'll still hear people say, well, mixed martial arts is still growing. In some people's eyes, like my eyes, it's very, it's growing, but it's kind of hitting that plateau again uh, of mm-hmm. where we're not, we're not seeing as much of an influx that we expect. People are going to other things. They're going to specific things, um, specific training, my type of training, American Kempo or Brazilian mm. Jiu-Jitsu or specific things like this. Not only that, we're getting out of the aspect of just coming to learn and for the exercise. Now it's getting into the schools. So a lot of people are focusing on having instructors come into schools to teach, having students come to the instructor after school programs is becoming a huge thing now. A lot of money and a lot of big schools are getting their money from after school programs. Um, but with that, it's interesting because I can still make money in one of two ways um, because uh, pretty soon we're going to make another big drastic change here, good change. I can either get an after school program there or I can focus myself on paying myself first and making money that way uh, uh, through gold again. So these are just different ways that things have changed. Um, It's going to be 20 years next July. It will be my 20th years in the martial arts. And that's just from 1997. Things have changed since the early 80s of the age of the karate kid. They've changed from the 50s, definitely from the 50s today to today. is a drastic change. So it's constantly in flux. Um, things expand, things contract. It's the same thing with the martial arts world. It's very interesting when you look at the way the businesses are being run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm seeing from, from, or I'm hearing from what you're saying is that it, it's a lot of um, uh, non-localized training, meaning, you know, you could be, like, you could literally be the school. And you go to New Jersey and you go to Pennsylvania or if somebody wants to fly you out to California or right. whatever the case may be. Um, but that, that it's not about necessarily or only, you know, you being in a physical building and students coming to you. You can actually have a lot more flexibility and creativity, which is really what American Kimpo is all about. Uh, being mm-hmm. flexible, being creative in your art. Um, and if you are able to generate money in a flexible, creative way, non-localized, coming from all over the place, that's what's so beautiful about the Internet, um, combining that with what you do, is that's just really phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. Well, let's switch gears a bit and move to the present where our audience of Independent martial arts instructors, I want to kind of get the results you've achieved. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. It's going to be kind of like, you know, quick fire questions yep. about what you would do if you had to start all over again right now. I know you touched on it earlier, but we're going to say if you had to start from scratch and strive to duplicate the results that you are having today. So, uh, so you ready to go? Absolutely. Whenever you are. Okay. Okay. So, David, if you had to start all over again with martial arts and taking into account financial stability in today's world that you just talked to us about, taking into account tools, time constraints, and other factors, give me one word or a few words, what would you do differently? So I would have stopped chasing the carrot right away. Uh, I wouldn't have worried about... Um, even though we were all brought up saying you need a job, you need a job, you need a job, I would have focused more on where can I get the most amount of money, not just the quickest, but the most effective way, uh, and then being able to implement that money into the business. Um, nice. And again, we've come a long way from where we were in the very beginning when we look at where Stars Martial Arts started and what I call the twins, two of my, my, uh, my protégés, my senior instructors that I have under me where we started in their parents' living room, moving the table, working with each other, to where we are now, basically in about a 1,300-square-foot studio and soon to be almost 2,200-square-feet studio. Uh, I mean, we, we've, grown, we've grown fast over the two years, but if I would have found different streams of income, not just one stream, 
we would have grown even quicker uh, and been even stronger than where we are today. Got it. Um, and so what would you do more of? So I would try to find more streams of income, um, not okay. just the one, not just the job, not just the goal. There's different ways um, that we're able to make more tangible money. I'm not just talking about paper money, IOUs. I'm talking about tangible money that can then be put back into the business. Uh, and then by putting it back into the business, make more money off of it. Gotcha. And tell me what would you have not, well, you did say you wouldn't have chased the carrot. I was going to say what you would have not done at all, but you answered that. You said, I would not chase the carrot. Cool. Okay. I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have chased the carrot. I wouldn't worry. The biggest thing right now, people are so worried about what other people think of them. Don't worry about what other people think of you. You're your own person. And, I mean, this is the biggest thing that my grandparents, that which mean the world to me, my grandparents have installed in us is it doesn't matter what other people think. You're your own person. You do what you're put on this earth to do, which for me, I finally figured out that this is what I was meant to do. I was meant to have a karate studio. I was meant to be this type of a person. I wasn't meant to be somebody that sits behind a desk nine to five, five times a week. So yeah. that's really where I am with that. Yep. Cool. And um, so let's see, um, what are the best tools, uh, what are the best martial arts and financial stability tools that you would say every independent martial arts instructor need to know about? So the best tools, um, number one is a mentor. Uh, again, it comes back, I have a few mentors uh, in my, and mentors in my life. Number one would be my grandfather. Number two would be my father. Number three would be Mr. Francisco, my instructor. And number four actually would be you when I really look at it. Uh, I have certain people in my life that fill certain, I don't want to say obligations or voids, but fill certain criteria that I need. This is a better word. I need somebody that knows marketing. I need somebody that knows how to make the money. I need somebody that knows the business. I need somebody that knows how to communicate, and I need somebody that knows how to be a salesman. So these are the four people that I really have in my life, tools that I really use, uh, people that, I, that, that, that I'm able to interact with uh, mm. that really take me to that level that I need to be. Um, the so other doing thing, it on course, your own is not it, huh? No. <laughs> Trying to be the cheap anymore. cook and bottle washer in your business. <laughs> I learned that lesson in the first year. It's uh, not even a year, your first few months. I tried playing this game on my own, and that's all it is, is a game. But this game is not meant to be played on your own. When you play football, you can't play football, be the quarterback, be the wide receiver, and be the blocker at the same time. Mm, you have to have certain people on that team to really make the team a whole. Uh, at the same time, you need to be on the Internet. You need to have people see you. Uh, another thing that I really do is videos. Um, I do live videos on Facebook for people to see me, for people to hear my message, because uh, it's interesting. It's uh, my vision. I cast my vision out there basically by doing these live videos or even my subscriptions, um, and I'll get to my subscriptions there in a second. By doing the live videos, people see your face. They hear your message. Now, that can then lead to your subscriptions, which is a whole other tool that can really be used. Subscriptions uh, are basically people are able to subscribe to you. You're able to give them videos. You're able to interact with them. Uh, so you're able to actually, if somebody's in a totally different state, you're able to have office hours with them so they can actually see you so you can make money that way as well. So that's another mm -hmm. tool that can actually be used. Uh, and not only that, um, you're then able to give back because as a black belt or martial artist or a school owner, it's not always about how much we can take in. It's about giving back. I go and I give money to the Cancer Support Foundation saying, okay, I make this money, but I had my father had cancer, multiple types of cancer. My aunt had multiple types of cancer. My grandmother had cancer. My other grandmother had skin cancer. All these family members have cancer or had cancer at one point in time. 
I needed to be one of those people stepped up. I felt obligated enough to say, okay, my family has gone through all of this. How can I give back to not only my family, but other families in the world? How can I give mm-hmm. back as, a, as not only a person, but as a martial artist? So you're able to hit all these different tracks, use all these different tools to implement, to, to be able to grow and evolve and expand your business. So you know what I'm seeing right now is, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, universal catch. I'm just mm-hmm. seeing this web of the web, the web of your business with all these different ways that you seem to be developing income to come to you, not just physically, I got to be on the mat and teach, you know, techniques and forms. And Well, I'm seeing that you're like bringing the universal symbol to life. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So do you have any tips for time management when it comes to martial arts and financial stability? The biggest tip I have is get a calendar. <laughs> get, get a calendar. That's simple. Make sure, yeah, yeah. Get a calendar. Make sure it's up to date. I still find myself um, day after day. You can't keep track of all this on your own. Um, case in point, two weeks ago I was in New, Gen- New Jersey teaching a seminar. This weekend, I'm going back up to upstate New Jersey to actually get lessons. Um, We have to be able to keep track of who we're teaching, when we're supposed to teach, times, dates. Um, Actually, after this, around 4.30 this afternoon, I have somebody actually coming for a private lesson. So you keep that calendar up to date, keep everything you need on it, and and just follow it. That's the biggest time management thing that I have. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Okay. Um, Would you say that it's easier or harder for independent martial arts instructors starting out today um, than it was when you got started? And then why or why not? I think that it's harder at this point in time. Um, Not only when I got started, but when the martial arts actually hit the U.S. When you take a look at the history, which is, again, my grandmother being a historian, very enthralled in history. When we look at when the U.S., when martial arts started hitting in the U.S. after World War II, uh, from Japan, Okinawa, all these types of things, now coming here, not everybody knew about this. Uh, Ninjutsu guys bringing it over, things like this. Nowadays, when I then started mine, I knew there were a lot. Let's say case in point in Baltimore. There's mine. There's one about 15 miles, 10, 15 miles from me. There's one about 20 miles from me. There's one about five miles from him, another one about 10 miles from him, all within the bottom of the area. Huh? <laughs> exactly. It's becoming Starbucks at this point. There's one on every corner. So you have to be one of those type of people, one of those class A type of people or mindset type A type of people that are very quick on their feet, that are very knowledgeable in what they do, that can bend when they need to bend, that can sway when they need to sway, bob and weave, all these things if you want to be a martial artist. You have to be very adaptable to your environment to be able to survive. Mm. Wow. Good. Good. Wow. This has been a really great interview. I have, you know, watched a ton of, um, and, and of course, you know, read a lot of, Um, interviews with martial arts instructors that own their own schools and um, but never one quite like this so you know where you're talking about all of the the internet and um, you know this unique way of um, you know really benefiting your students and benefiting your school financially where they get to kind of choose how they pay that's I mean it's incredible so I want to really thank you for taking the time to come and share your expertise, uh, your you. viewpoint in these two areas. And I want to know your final thought here. What final thoughts do you have that will help motivate independent martial arts instructors uh, to get started, to take their martial arts, and, and to take their financial stability serious and to the next level like you have done? Sure. 
So my final thoughts, um, my grandfather's a Holocaust survivor. So when he came over to the U.S., uh, he basically, he was getting money off of um, just the government itself. He was offered a job that would actually give him less money than he could make off of the government. He went to his social worker, and the social worker gave him the best advice that he can give any of his grandchildren. After knowing how much he was making and how much he could make, that social worker said to him, you have to start somewhere. You have to start sometime. And in doing so, he has given his grandchildren, my other cousins and I, the best life that he possibly could coming to the U.S. with nothing. He didn't have anything to his name. He didn't have a dollar to his name. And now they're living very comfortably just by that one piece of advice that the social worker gave them. And the same advice is what I always hear ringing in my ears when I'm like, is this something I should be doing? When I first opened the studio, is this something I should do? Do people really want to hear from me? Do they want to hear what I have to say? Do they want to do what I want them to do? And it's that leap of faith of somebody telling you, you just have to start sometime. You have to start somewhere. So if you're hearing all those self-doubts, put them aside. If you want to do something, this is the U.S. That's the best thing. It's the U.S. This is a country made of entrepreneurs. So if there's something you want to do it, being a martial artist like myself or anything else, just do it. If it's a dream, do it. That, that would be my final thought. That's great. David, how can people get in touch with you? Because I am sure that we're going to have some other independent uh, martial arts instructors that are going to want to talk to you about these unique ideas. So wh- where can they get in touch with you? So there's multiple ways of finding me. Um, you can always find us on the Internet, uh, so either LinkedIn as well as Facebook. You can find us at Styers Martial Arts. That's the name of the school. I know my last name looks crazy, but that's how you say it, Styer. Uh, so Styers Martial Arts. You can find us on Twitter as well as Pinterest. It's the handle at VKKSI Baltimore. Um, you can always find our school's website, VKKSIBaltimore.com. And even our subscriptions as well. I brought that up. That's at stiresmartialarts.com. Um, and then you can always call us. Uh, and I'm happy to give that number. That's 410-218-0894. And 410-218-0894. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, your time today, for you sharing your expertise and your different vantage points, and um, I look forward to more of these. From what I understand, you have a lot more to share with us uh, yeah. in the upcoming year, and I also understand you have several books that will be coming out in 2017. That's correct? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing what you got coming for, for us in the martial art, just taking and spinning it on its head in a whole new way. So thanks for all that you do, David. And thank you for having me on here as well. You bet. All right.